Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. Flint develops a machine that can turn water molecules into food, but when a huge storm approaches, the entire planet Earth begins to be buried by food, and it is up to the young scientist to fix this chaos. Today we will recap the story of the movie, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, from 2009. Flint is a young man who has always been passionate about science and who, ever since he was little, has been developing all sorts of crazy inventions, such as a spray shoe, a fusion between rats and birds, and a super-powered substance that can turn anyone into a furry creature. Flint was born in Swallow Falls, a small island that has always been famous for exporting tons of sardines, but as the years went by, people around the world stopped consuming sardines and the town's factory went bankrupt, forcing the entire population to consume the tons of cans that were left over. To end the suffering of the Swallow Falls population, Flint plans to create a machine capable of turning water molecules into food. Together with his faithful friend Steve, Flint spends several weeks developing the machine until it is finally ready. When the day of the big test arrives, Flint tinkers with hundreds of extensions and finally turns on the machine. Now that he finally has power, Flint finishes programming and asks the machine to make a burger, but thanks to the monstrous contraption he has created, the electrical circuit ends up overloaded, leaving his house completely without power. Wanting to continue with his tests, Flint goes to the power switchboard, but when he is changing the fuses, he is surprised by his father. Tired of seeing his son waste time and money on these inventions, Tim asks Flint to give up his gadgets and come work with him in the fish store. Knowing that he just needs more energy to finish his food-producing machine, Flint tries to ask for another chance to finish the project, but Tim refuses and takes him to the store. While stacking the cans of sardines in his father's store, Flint sees the mayor announcing a new opening when Brent, the former poster boy for the sardine factory, shows up and knocks over all the cans only to upset him. After Brent leaves, Tim shows up and tells Flint to go to the opening, but in order to be alone, the boy says he will remain at the store and asks his father to go in his place. As soon as Tim walks out the door, Flint takes advantage of the fact that everyone is busy watching the inauguration and rushes with his newest machine to the city's high-tension towers, but is intercepted halfway by Earl the chief of police. Knowing Flint's background, Earl tries to figure out what he is up to, but when a pedestrian crosses out of the crosswalk, he gets distracted and leaves Flint completely free to run away. In the town square, the mayor begins to make his inauguration speech while Sam, an intern at a news channel, talks about the event. While Sam transmits the mayor's speech, Flint connects his machine to the high-voltage networks that finally make it work, but so much electricity overloads the machine that it becomes a rocket and begins to fly uncontrollably through the city. At the same time, the mayor finishes his speech and officially inaugurates his newest project, the Sardine Land. Flint flies through the crowd and hits the camera, knocking it into Sam's face. While trying to break the machine, Flint hits a stop sign that forces him to let go of the cables and let his newest invention fly off into the sky. On the ground, Flint is captured by Earl who arrests him for disturbing the peace, but while the policeman is arresting him, the base that holds the pot with the world's largest sardine breaks and starts to roll pouring water everywhere and destroying everything in its path. After the pot breaks, Flint runs to the docks and sits on the ladder thinking about all the trouble he has already caused with his failures. While he is reflecting, Sam also arrives at the dock and throws her microphone away believing she has missed the opportunity of her life. When she notices Flint's presence, Sam starts to vent when she realizes that he is to blame for everything and starts to complain. But suddenly something falls from the sky. Curious, they slowly approach it until they realize that it was a slice of cheese. Already wondering what this means, Flint looks up at the sky and sees that a large colored cloud is approaching, bringing a rainstorm of thousands of hamburgers per second. Happy that one of his inventions has finally worked, Flint celebrates wildly, while Sam calls her cameraman Manny, to record a report. With everything prepared, Sam starts her live broadcast and reveals to the whole world that a hamburger rain is happening at Swallow Falls, leaving everyone surprised. Upon learning that Flint is the one responsible for this, Earl tries to arrest him once again for destroying the sardine land, but believing that this new machine may serve to attract tourists, the mayor decides to forgive the boy and in return asks him to make it rain even more food. As the days go by, Flint keeps making it rain people's favorite foods, which finally makes him popular. Knowing that this is the perfect opportunity to profit from tourism, the mayor goes to Flint and hands him a huge menu, asking him to make these foods to attract the attention of investors to the city. He plans to raise the money to renovate and reopen the island, but as the meals are cooked, the machine's sensor indicates an increasing overload. As the days go by, the leftover food ends up scattered in the streets, but instead of reducing production to avoid waste, 
Flint has the idea of creating a catapult robot that throws all the leftovers into a dam at the bottom of the island. As Flint's foods become more and more famous, Tim's store goes bankrupt and he starts giving the sardines away for free, but instead of trying to help his father, Flint decides to just ignore it and continue his mega production, getting further and further away from the people he loves. After almost a month that Flint's machine has been in the sky, the mayor finally finishes the renovations and asks Sam to make a report to announce the reopening of the city, in order to attract tourists from all over the world to the new island. Even with the danger meter getting closer and closer to a critical state, Flint continues to abuse the machine, but feeling he needs to apologize, he makes a reservation with his father at the newest restaurant in town, a roofless place where plates of food literally fall from the sky. At the restaurant, Flint tells Tim that the mayor has asked him to cut the reopening ribbon, but instead of congratulating his son, Tim realizes that the food is getting bigger and bigger and tries to get Flint to turn off the machine. Finding his father unwilling to support him, Flint starts a nasty argument with him, who ends up leaving the restaurant while saying he doesn't want to get in the way. Furious, the boy starts walking back home, but when a giant hot dog nearly crushes him in the middle of the street, Flint remembers what his father said and decides to take a sample back to the lab. While analyzing the giant hot dog, Flint realizes that the molecules in the food are mutating and that the radiation meter is almost at its maximum stage, which makes him consider shutting down the machines, but while he is pondering what to do, the mayor appears in the lab and begins to emotionally blackmail Flint, saying that the future of the city depends on him. Wanting to make the mayor aware of what is going on, Flint explains that the radiation is making the food bigger and bigger, but thinking only of the tourist income, the mayor continues with the emotional blackmail, saying that this is the only way people will recognize what a genius scientist he is. Influenced by the mayor's words, Flint introduces a huge menu for the city's reinauguration event, further overloading the machine that is sucking in all the surrounding clouds. When the day of the big event arrives Sam decides to check her weather radar and discovers that a frightening storm is approaching. Worried, she goes to the event and tries to tell Flint about her discovery, but deluded by the mayor's words, the boy ignores everything she says and accuses her of being jealous of his genius. After speaking all this lunacy, Flint goes on stage to cut the opening ribbon, while being applauded by thousands of people from all over the world, but as soon as he goes to cut the ribbon, a gale of salt and pepper begins, turning into a tornado of spaghetti shortly thereafter. Seeing the tornado heading in the direction of his laboratory, Flint desperately runs into the crowd as he tries to dodge the storm, but ends up being blown into the tornado. After some time in the center of the gale, Flint manages to escape the tornado and, finally in safety, he climbs into the laboratory where he finds the mayor making even more requests, pushing the machine to its limits. Desperate, Flint tells about what is happening outside and asks the mayor to stop, but instead of listening, he simply finishes the request, activates the machine, and starts to walk away. Even after this stupid move by the mayor, Flint thinks he can still fix things and starts to insert the deactivation key, but when he realizes that Flint is going to turn the machine off, the damn mayor comes back and tries to hold him back. To get free, the boy hits a bell pepper in the man's eye and runs to try to activate the button that sends the password, but to try to stop him, the mayor throws a radish in his direction that ends up hitting the antenna at the last second, preventing the computer commands from reaching the machine. While all this is going on in the lab, Sam starts a broadcast to warn about the food storm, but instead of taking it seriously, the host starts making jokes about her appearance and ends the broadcast. After being interrupted, Sam goes back to check the storm on her device and realizes that thanks to the mayor's gluttony, that chaotic weather is spreading all over the planet. Determined to warn people about what is about to happen, Sam manages to convince Manny to put her on the air again, and finally live, she tells the trajectory of the storm, revealing that within four hours the entire northern hemisphere will be buried in tons of food. Upon seeing Sam's story, Tim goes to the lab to try to cheer up Flint and return his lab coat, which he had lost in the tornado. After talking with his father, Flint becomes emboldened and begins to plan a way to stop the machine together with Steve. After some time of thinking, the boy passes the deactivating password to a USB stick and takes advantage of an old project to develop a flying car. With the vehicle finished, Flint goes downtown, tells them his plan to deactivate the robot and asks the population to use the food to build lifeboats, and apologizes to everyone, especially Sam. But just as Flint finishes speaking, the damned mayor shows up and throws all the blame on him, causing everyone to turn on the boy. Seeing this injustice, Earl from the crowd remembers that everyone asked Flint to make it rain on their favorite foods and asks them to trust the young scientist. After this speech, Earl takes on the responsibility of building the boats and runs along with a good part of the population to accomplish this mission, leaving the rest of his friends to stop the robot. 
The quintet gets into the flying car and sets off toward the machine, but halfway there, they end up passing through a pea soup fog, which totally takes away their vision. After coming out of the fog, they continue flying until they finally approach the machine, which is now protected by a gigantic honeycomb. As if this were not problem enough, now the robot has created a life of its own, and, knowing that they will try to shut it down, the machine sends several slices flying in an attempt to hit them. While they are trying to get away from the diabolical pizzas, a slice of cheese hits the car window and the pressure difference ends up pulling the flash drive out. Without the deactivating password, Flint calls his father and asks him to send the code by email, and even though he doesn't understand anything about technology, Tim decides to accept and help his son. While the man goes to the lab, Flint's group finally lands on top of the meatball and they begin to plan their strategy. Trying to stop the planetary destruction, Flint decides that while Manny, Brent and Steve wait in the car, he and Sam will enter the hopper and go straight to the machine to deactivate it. With the plan laid out, Flint and Sam jump through the hole in the center of the meatball, but during the fall, Brent decides he wants to go too and jumps after them, causing them to veer off course and end up in some sort of food ventilation duct. While the trio is walking through a sea of boiling oil, Tim finally arrives at the lab and calls Flint to ask what he should do now, but even with his son's instructions, Tim is unable to use the mouse and suffers a great deal when using the computer. At the same time, the people in the town finally finish building the boats and start putting them in the water. When suddenly, the mayor appears once again only to steal one of the boats and abandon the population. While he is doing this, Earl is carrying the last dinghy when his son falls in the middle of the road. When the man returns to save him, all the weight of the leftovers ends up weakening the structure of the dam, and a veritable avalanche with tons of food starts advancing towards them. To save his family, Earl puts his wife and son on top of the dinghy and starts running desperately towards the water, managing to escape at the last second. At that moment, Tim, who is still talking to Flint, finally manages to find the button to send the email, but just as Tim is about to click it, the avalanche of leftovers reaches the laboratory, destroying the whole place. From inside the giant meatball, Flint tries to communicate with his father, when suddenly, he and his friends are cornered by a group of ninja roast chickens who devour Brent in one bite. With no hope of getting out of this alive, Flint begins to say goodbye to his father over the phone, but upon hearing his son's message, Tim gathers his last strength to get out of the leftover rubble and crawls to the computer where he finally sends the email. But all this effort is to no avail, for as soon as Flint receives the email, one of the mutant chickens devours his cell phone, almost swallowing his hand along with it. At that moment, one of the chickens begins to struggle wildly and loses control of its own body. That's right, Brent has possessed the chicken. Now with the body of a kung fu master chicken, Brent begins to use his blows against the birds, managing to knock out a good portion of them and recover Flint's cell phone, but since there are many enemies, Brent decides to stay behind to distract them, while Flint and Sam move on. After advancing a bit, the duo reaches a hole that leads straight to the machine, but things can't be that easy. It turns out that the walls of this hole have several super sharp pieces of peanut brittle. And since Sam is allergic to peanuts, a single touch can be fatal. While they are deciding what to do, some of the most famous places in the world begin to be hit by the food storm, starting the apocalypse. While the planet is slowly being destroyed, Flint and Sam find a licorice rope and the boy decides to rappel down while Sam holds the rope, but halfway down, the giant meatball starts shaking, knocking the reporter who loosed the rope. To save Flint's life, Sam gets up quickly and holds the rope, but due to the jolt, she ends up piercing her arm on one of those candies. As a result of her allergy, Sam's entire body begins to swell up. To prevent something worse from happening to her, Flint asks Brent to take the girl to the car to take the anti-allergic and breaks the licorice rope, falling straight into the abyss. While Flint falls through the hole and Brent carries Sam out, Steve and Manny are crashing the pizzas in the flying car when they are attacked by mutant gummy bears that try to destroy the vehicle. Since he has always been passionate about this treat, Steve goes into a state of frenzy and begins devouring all the teddy bears, one after the other. When he arrives outside, Brent doesn't see the car, but since he is being cornered by an army of samurai chickens, he decides to throw himself into the abyss, where he ends up being saved by Manny and Steve at the last second. In the center of the meatball, Flint stands up and slowly approaches the robot, but even though he is in stealth mode, the machine can sense his presence and begins to attack him. Unable to be seen, Flint disguises himself among the food until the robot forgets about him and goes back to preparing the next snack. At this point, Flint improvises a kind of swing that he uses to get to the machine to stop it. With the robot immobilized, Flint plugs his cell phone into the machine and begins to insert the deactivation key, but to his surprise, instead of sending the key, his father ends up sending a kitten video. At this point, 
The machine manages to detach itself from the rope and start swinging to make Flint fall, but since it can't bring him down like that, the robot decides to appeal and starts preparing a ton of food to come out of the tube in one go, this will surely take Flint along. In his last seconds of life, Flint remembers the shoe spray he invented in his childhood and decides to use it to plug the machine's food outlet, causing a huge explosion that destroys the meatball completely, but unfortunately Flint is also hit. With the machine destroyed, the storm simultaneously stops all around the world, leaving only the remains of food to tell the story. After escaping the machine explosion, Manny drives back to the island as everyone applauds the success of Flint's plan. Upon seeing the vehicle, Tim rushes to get his son back, but when he sees that everyone has left but the boy, Tim realizes what has happened to Flint and begins to cry along with Sam. But suddenly, the young scientist appears on the horizon being carried by the ancient ratbirds, the species he developed when he was small. When he realizes that Flint is alive, Tim runs to him and finally tells him how proud he is, making it clear how much he loves his son. Eventually, the people managed to clean up all the mess caused by the robot and went on to live their lives as normal, except for the mayor who is sinking alone in the middle of the ocean. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.